Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this oh so exciting video, I'm going to unbox and review these Ferragamo business shoes. And that's probably going to be about as exciting as it sounds. But I'll tell you what's in the box, I'll give you a tour of the shoes, and I'll give you an idea about why I bought them. And in essence, I bought them because they're comfortable, they look reasonable with a suit, which is what I need to use them for because I'm in finance, and they basically work. And also they were on sale, which was probably a big bonus point and a selling point. So, pro tip here, always buy Ferragamo stuff on sale, if at all possible, particularly when it comes down to shoes. In any case, I'll link to these shoes in the description below, and if you have any thoughts about Ferragamo shoes, drop those in the comments below, and otherwise, I very much hope you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as some background to these, I've had Ferragamo shoes for actually quite some time, and I have worn Ferragamo business shoes for a while now. So here are my old shoes, and they're kind of wearing out a little bit, hence the consideration of the new shoes. And as you can kind of see at the back of the shoes, it's kind of, yeah, it's showing a lot of wear. Now that's no fault of the shoes, it's primarily a fault of A, how I walk, and also B, the fact that I've had them for a while and I wear them a lot. Hence why they're kind of getting toward the end of their usable life, and hence why I bought some new shoes. Okay, well we have the typical Ferragamo red box here, it looks like a shoebox. It also rather nicely came with a thank you card, which admittedly arrived because I got shipping on these, so it kind of came here to make me feel good, I guess. It comes with a faux bow. The bow is not actually a real bow, which probably is for the best because I didn't really want to bother untying it. It's a little bit elasticized, so you could probably use it to hang something else. However, it's not really that useful, to be totally honest. Maybe you could use it like on a dog collar to make your dog look pretty, which is probably not a terrible idea, but be careful not to actually strangle your dog because that's probably not great. All right, so we've got the box here. It's a normal shoe box. If we open it up, we can kind of see what's inside. Now, inside this, you'll get effectively your dust cover. You'll get kind of like this authenticity type card that goes through various customer care instructions. Nothing particularly interesting in here. Multiple different languages. I, to be totally honest, never read these. English is the third paragraph. Zero idea what it says, really. This is my first time actually looking at one of these things. I mean, there's information there if you actually care about it. I don't really, but yeah, it's there. Make sure you get it if you buy these shoes to make sure they're genuine. Also, you have the dust bag. The dust bag doesn't really have much in it, obviously, because it's empty right now, but you get one for each shoe. Probably best to keep these. Uh, you could probably fit both shoes into one, to be totally honest, so I kind of treat this as a bit of redundancy, but people might keep them separately. Personal choice there. Again, you can kind of get these on eBay or sell them on eBay, so if you're never actually going to use them, you can probably just sell these, because why not? I mean, if it's going to be pointless otherwise. In any case, you've got the dust bags here, two of them, makes perfect sense. Now, otherwise in the box here, we have obviously tissue paper, which is oh so exciting to look at. And then we have the shoes inside. Now, the shoes are packaged rather neatly, I guess, as you would expect. Nothing especially remarkable about the packaging. Now, the shoes themselves look like shoes, um, which is not particularly insightful, I would now realize. But of course, come with tissue paper inside. Now... Other than that, we can have a look at the shoes all around them. Now, the shoes themselves are leather, unsurprisingly, and they're black, as you can probably tell. Now, inside, of course, we have this reasonably nice inner sole here, which is cushiony enough. It's difficult to really show on video, but it presses in to give a bit of support. Otherwise, the construction is also reasonably nice. Now, these particular shoes are a little bit firm when it comes to the leather, but they're otherwise okay. One thing you will want to be mindful of, though, is if we have a look at the back of the shoe, this could easily be a problem for some people because it kind of curves up. So you want to make sure that this back bit is not going to dig in because if it digs in, this will make them excruciatingly painful to wear. So I personally would prefer it to be a little bit lower. However, it's still okay for me. Uh, in terms of the heel height, this is probably on the high side for what I'd wear. I'm not particularly tall, so I generally dislike wearing higher heels because I generally dislike the try-hard effect that emerges when you're wearing high heels and you're short. 
To be totally honest, high heels only really work if you're taller, because otherwise it looks like you're pretending, and it looks kind of stupid. Alright, so we've got the other shoe, other side here. Not much to say about it. In terms of the sole, the sole is interesting, because you can see some variation in the Ferragamo soles. So this particular one has a bit of variation in terms of some rubber at the bottom, but also some leather surrounding it. Ferragamo doesn't always do soles like this, and some of their other shoes have different looking soles. So, for example, if we have a look at this other pair of shoes that I have, which admittedly is really dirty, apologies about the mess on the bottom of the shoe, but I wear them. So this is another pair of Ferragamo business shoes. It's pretty much entirely rubber in the operative part, or at least it looks like rubber. Maybe it's leather. It doesn't really matter. The heel here is rubber, which is the operative part here, to be totally honest. And there's also some layering on this that is going to make it easier to wear. Now, these are clearly not going to be completely leather, because if they're completely leather, then you would just slip everywhere, and I never slip in them. So that's, an, uh, that's another pair of Ferragamo shoes. Also not bad. I preferred this other pair of shoes, because the heel here comes up a little bit less high, and also the leather's a little bit softer, but as you can see, they're a little bit worn. Still not terrible, but a little bit worn. You can kind of notice that I've used them quite a bit, hence why I bought them. Now, if we just compare the heels on this pair to the heels on my new pair. So the new pair is the one that looks new. And the heel on the new pair is demonstrably higher. So that's not generally what I would buy. I'd generally go with the older pair here. However, this newer pair was on sale, and I don't hate the heel enough to not buy this one. So, if we go back to this sole of the, of the shoe here, again, we have some rubberized portion here. Now, the reason that's good is because it kind of means that you're not going to slip. Leather is painful to walk in. I mean, painful in terms of slipping, which is ultimately painful. I mean, they can be cushioned, but if you slip over, that's not great. So, this helps to prevent that, which is generally a plus. Gives you a little bit of additional cushioning when you walk. The heel here is also a little bit different from my older one. So in the older one, there was a little bit more give on the heel, i.e. the heel portion of it had a little bit more, I guess padding for want of a better word, to give it a little bit more give when you walked. But as you can tell, it wears away. You can obviously get these resold at some point, but again, that's obviously something you might want to do down the track, and I'd obviously look at doing this at some point in time. Uh, because obviously having two pairs of shoes is better than none, to be obviously clear here. Alright, so that's pretty much what the shoes look like. Now, in terms of doing them up, laces are basically what you would expect. Again, nothing exciting to say about that. Another feature that I don't like as much about these is the toe here is a little bit squared off. Uh, now, you only really notice it when you start noticing that it's squared off. Otherwise, you don't really see it. Not a massive fan. I kind of prefer it if it were a little bit more round. But again... This is not the end of the world. And to be totally clear, if it's on sale but not perfect, I'll take that over, not on sale, and absolutely what I want. So that's pretty much what the shoe is. Now, in terms of getting it on and off, well, I'll have to come back in front of the camera and kind of show you how easy or not that is to do. Okay, so when it comes to getting them on and off, again, it's a relatively straightforward-ish procedure, which admittedly is slightly difficult to capture on camera because I'm kind of trying to do that at the same time as putting shoes on, which is, to be honest, actually more tricky than you'd expect. So we get the shoe, foot goes in the shoe. Again, nothing hugely exciting to say about that. Now, as you'll notice here, there's a bit of an issue with the heel uh, and a bit of the issue at the end. I'm going to use a pen as like a shoehorn here. The reason that's the case is because I don't actually have a shoehorn easily available that I could find. So I'm going to use the pen. It works okay. This is like a 20 cent shoehorn that I can use as a pen as well. So, a, uh, a tip here, you can always use these Papermate pens as a decent shoehorn if you're kind of stuck for shoehorns. Now these shoes obviously don't really go with my jeans, but whatever. Um, do it up as a normal shoe, nothing exciting to say about this. In terms of the fit of the shoes, they should obviously be the uh, exact same size, so I'm not really going to go through that on the other foot. However, I probably do need to go through it just so I can show it easily enough when I'm actually putting on the shoes and you can kind of see how the shoes fit around my feet. Now, in terms of the actual fit, that's going to be a matter of personal preference here. The reason I say personal preference is essentially because when you're trying, to, trying on the shoes, 
different people have different sized feet and different dimensions and different widths and they're going to have different dimensions particularly in the case of the heel of your foot so you're going to need to try out if it actually fits you okay but for me these fit perfectly well my experience with my old Ferragamo shoes is they were hugely comfortable and therefore that's why I bought this new pair however again always try them on or you can always take a gamble and if they don't really work out you can try to return them so in any case that's my thought on these Ferragamo shoes. I hope this unboxing has not been too dreadfully dreary for you, and I hope it's given you a bit of an idea about what the shoes are like. And now that we're at the end of this oh so exciting video, grazie for listening to me drone on about business shoes, which I'm sure was an incredibly exciting experience for you. In any case, I'll link to the shoes in the description below. Otherwise, thanks a lot for tuning in. I uh, hope you find the video somewhat informative. If you had, it would be great if you clicked the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I very much hope to see you for future videos. Bye.